Hi and welcome back to 90 Day Dental Day 50. We've managed to get to the big 5A which is a really big achievement. Moving forward, if you can please try and share, like and comment on all our pages on both YouTube and Instagram to get the latest updates of every single video that gets released whilst we're on the home stretch. So we're starting a completely brand new topic today. We're going to go into the topic of whitening, um, which will be covered over a couple of days. And it's going to be myself kicking this topic off to begin with. I'll see you in a second. Right, hi. Oh, let's get comfy. <laughs> so, we're going to be talking about whitening and we're going to be rattling through a number of slides. This is part of a much bigger um, course and program that we normally run, but um, I'm just going to go through today and spend a bit of time talking about an a bit of an introduction to whitening and all the different options out there, or more accurately, bleaching, which we'll talk about in a second. So we're going to briefly touch on a number of these points as we're going through over the next couple of days. Um, the one thing we won't get any time to cover, which will be very difficult to do as well, is photography training for whitening. The one thing I would mention is go back to the photography one by Bilal Arshad earlier, which will be a lot more detailed than, uh, than what I would have time to cover here. But we will touch on that slightly with our eye with shade matching later. So, a couple of things that cause discoloration in teeth, and mainly it's, it's three things. We're talking about extrinsic discoloration, we're talking about internalization discoloration, and we're talking about intrinsic discoloration. And also, which is more than likely, a combination of the above, because you never really have one in isolation and not more than one. So again, it's useful to know because some of the things that we'll be talking about are really concentrated on internalization and intrinsic stain removal, and not really on extrinsic discoloration. Um, the bleaching process itself will not concentrate on that. What is teeth whitening? So, teeth whitening is the actual bleaching process that removes the stains from the enamel and the dentine of teeth. The reason that's important is because the active ingredient is always hydrogen peroxide. There's a lot of talk out there about peroxides being really harmful to the teeth and being very damaging to the teeth and the, how these whitening products are peroxide free. It's complete rubbish. At the end of the day, only peroxides will whiten, will bleach the teeth properly. Anything other than peroxides will not have the same effect and it will not have the same long lasting effects as well. So, hence the need for this slide. Whitening is the name of the products that are used to remove external stains. Because bleaching is what we do to remove the actual internal and external stains ourselves. The, then the reason it's useful to make that distinction is because our patients need to understand the difference as well that the products they can buy are all whiteners and not bleachers. Bleaching products are the ones that they can get from us. Whitening products are the thing, things that they can buy off the shelf. So nowadays, treatment options. We have nighttime home bleaching, which is the most common type of bleaching that we use. We have daytime home bleaching, which can be done during the day if the need arises and there will be reasons for it. Uh, assisted deep bleaching, and it's a one or two very, very well-known systems out there for that. And also in surgery, power bleaching, which again is things like um, Zoom laser whitening and any other, which is one of the brands, uh, the, the most famous brands for it, but there are others as well. One of the most famous cases that we've done previously, um, this is one of my patients, Danny who wanted to, it was part of a bigger uh, plan for, for various other things. And the idea behind this one really is just to concentrate on the whitening, ignore the other dentistry that's been done here because that's not our aim for this particular case. This was straightening, whitening and bonding. It was a, a much, part of a much bigger plan. But in this particular case, it was literally three weeks of normal home bleaching is what it took to achieve this particular result for her, which she was over the moon with and extremely happy. And for a patient that first came in wanting veneers, we've managed to achieve the smile of her dreams that she really wanted using her own natural teeth with just a couple of tweaks, which is exactly what minimally invasive dentistry is all about. 
Another classic case. Um, this particular patient, oh, let's go back a slide. This particular patient came in wanting um, a change to um, her front teeth. She had a couple of old crowns, um, two crowns and a veneer that were done uh, many years ago. They've done a good, good enough job, decent job all these years. She wanted the teeth to be a lot whiter. We couldn't whiten these teeth without doing something with those front teeth. Any adjustments to the back teeth would have made them stand out significantly. So as a result of uh, this was four weeks of home whitening um, and then changing the front teeth to blend them in so much better helped us to achieve a fantastic result on this particular case. But just for the sake of completeness, that upper right six crown was changed a few years later um, for functional reasons that allowed me to also be able to get it to blend in even more perfectly. Sadly, I don't have the photos for those, but it achieved a really nice result and it helped blend everything in as well. So the bleaching process itself, oxygen radicals are the, are the main reason and causes for, uh, for the whitening process. They penetrate the enamel, um, they break down the, uh, the outside layer um, of, the of the dentinal tubules, and penetrate through and go all the way into the pulp and out of the other side of the teeth. And whilst in the process of doing that, they pick up the staining molecules and take, take them with them on the journey in the process. And sometimes when you hear a patient saying that they felt these um, electric shock-like symptoms or zingers as we call them, that's what it is. It's the staining molecules, uh, it's the actual oxygen radicals passing through the pulp chamber and going out of the other side. And that's what they're feeling. It's not particularly harmful to the teeth. And actually once the whitening and the bleaching process has stopped, then everything settles back down to normality. In terms of after treatment, oxygen radicals remain in the tooth for about two weeks. Um, it artificially lightens the tooth and reduces the bond strength. Hence, it affects the shade, which there is no doubt about. It definitely regresses in the first couple of weeks after stopping whitening, which is why we always over whiten and allow some fade back to happen so that we settle on a shade a few weeks later. And we've got to warn patients about this. Regardless of the result you're looking for, always over whiten by a week or two to try and get the end result that you're looking for. In some cases, it may only be uh, over whitening for a couple of days if they're actually happy with the end result. And finally, and most importantly, especially if it's part of a bigger restorative plan, you've got to delay the bonding procedure and the color matching process for at least two weeks to get a much better settled end result. And you will see this. If you get a shade match on the final day that the patient whitens, comparing it to the final day, or uh, once you've left it for say two or three weeks, there will be a difference. The tooth would have rehydrated more and it will be slightly darker than what it would have finished on um, due to the rehydration process. And finally, the current EU legislation, or finally for today anyway, um, a, a question that I get asked constantly is what is the current EU legislation at the moment? Um, regardless of whether we're in the EU or not, the legislation will still stand. And that is that non-prescription products can contain up to 0.1% hydrogen peroxide and they can be bought off the shelf by consumers. This is all the um, whitening toothpastes, um, all the whiteners that you can buy on the market in terms of being able to place them on the teeth. Le legally, they cannot contain more than 0.1% hydrogen peroxide regardless of their derivative. It could be any other product. Some of them used to contain carbon peroxide, and all of them, that is the maximum concentration eventually that they can contain legally. Um, anything up to 6% hydrogen peroxide are prescription only and can only be prescribed by a dentist. So a dentist must prescribe any bleaching products before a patient can start to use them. As long as a dentist prescribes though, um, after an assessment, the patient can be treated by a dentist or a dental hygienist or therapist working under their prescription. Under 18 year olds cannot have whitening unless covered by the Human Rights Act for exceptional cases. Um, and what I mean by that is cases of uh, bullying, neglect, etc., where there is a huge detriment so the teeth being the appearance that they are. And actually it's in the patient's best interest to have that done sooner than waiting until the age of 18. And the first application and insertion of the gel must be demonstrated to the patient and the trays fitted by a dental professional. And that's usually done at the fit appointment, which is the easiest way to do it. The GDC back that up. Bleaching and whitening are classified as performing dentistry and can only be performed by dental professionals as all whitening requires an initial assessment. 
And that's the key point in this. There's a lot of illegal whiteness out there. It's not so much in the news as much as it's been in the last couple of years. Um, but it's one of the key points is that every single whitening and bleaching process requires an initial assessment. And if you've assessed that patient's teeth, you have made a diagnosis. And that is the act of dentistry. I'm going to leave it there for today. And we're going to come back to um, going into a bit more detail about products and various different things tomorrow and take it even further. I hope that's been useful. It's been a bit of an introduction to home bleaching and we'll come back and join me tomorrow on 90 Day Dental Whitening Part 2.